Let's create an instrument in contact entirely from scratch. This exercise will introduce you to the concepts underlying the program as we've been doing gradually, but this time in a more practical way. We're going to build a piano. I have a series of samples that I've recorded, and they're included with this tutorial for you to use as well. As you'll see, nearly every key on the piano was recorded separately, at a close distance, and sustained for several seconds to give me flexibility when making a fully functional virtual piano out of it. I'll admit, they aren't the best recorded or highest fidelity samples around, but they'll get the job done. Let's start with a blank session, with nothing in the rack. Choose New Instrument from the Files menu above. Next, give your instrument a name by clicking and dragging, then typing within this field here. For simplicity, I'll call mine My Piano. First, let's pick an icon for our instrument by going to the Instrument Options window in the Instrument Edit mode and going to the Infos tab. Scroll here and pick an icon that you like for your instrument. I'll go with this one. Next, I'll give it a description here. Then I'll put in my first name and our website here. Now, I can hit the Quick Save button at any time to save my progress as I build and modify my piano. Next, we need to get things started with our samples since currently there's nothing loaded in this instrument and it's rather useless at the moment. Go to the Mapping Editor. Now turn to the Files tab on the browser and have a look at the piano samples in this folder. Each one is named appropriately so as to give contact the easiest time when assigning them to places in the keyboard. The sample file names may look a little strange and even redundant, but each part of the names, separated by dashes, actually denotes what's called a token. Tokens are useful pieces of information about what the note in the sample is and how it should be mapped. In short, there are more notes in the keyboard range that this instrument will use than there are samples for every key. So the first part, or token, will become the group name of these samples within the instrument. The second tells us the lowest key that it should be mapped to, and the third shows us the root key, which in our example here is always the same as the lowest key. And the last number here tells us the highest key that any particular sample should be mapped to. The general rule of thumb when mapping samples across multiple notes is not to have them mapped to any notes too high or too low from the original sound, since the tracking function in contact can make such drastically pitched notes sound a bit poor. So once you know you have all your samples named this way, simply select them all and then drag them into the mapping editor of contact. Once they're dropped in, Contact turns the samples into what are called zones. These rectangles with the sample names displayed along them. Zones are the most important concept for mapping out a new instrument, or affecting the samples within existing instruments. So our samples are now zones, but we still need to have Contact map them appropriately. We'll have Contact use the file names of the samples to do all of this for us. Highlight all the samples by pressing Ctrl A on a PC or Command A on a Mac. Then right click on one of the zones and choose Auto Map Setup. This is where that file name stuff I talked about a minute ago comes in handy. You can see from these drop down menus here that the file name is being divided into sections, or tokens, separated by dashes, and each bit of information is helping to map these zones and their samples appropriately. All of the default settings here look good, so let's simply press Apply. And then close the window. Now you can see they've been mapped appropriately, and I can even play the piano at this point. Though it sounds a bit rough. Why does it sound rough? Well, double click on this last zone, which is mapped across the entire octave from C5 to C6. You can see in the Wave Editor that this sample has a bit of noise at the beginning of it, as well as a bit of silence before the note plays. This doesn't just sound a bit off, it also means that there's a bit of a delay between when I hit a key and when I want it to actually start playing the sound. 
To fix this, I'll simply drag the selection start indicator a bit to the right, where the sound begins. Now, how can I do this to all the samples quickly? Just return to the mapping editor and toggle on Select Zone via MIDI. Now, as I play notes, the zone corresponding to the most recently played MIDI note will be instantly selected for editing, both in the mapping editor as well as in the wave editor. So now when I return to the wave editor, I can just play notes one by one along the whole piano and edit their start times very quickly. Now listen as I play. There are quite a lot of functions available here in the mapping editor to edit these zones, but for now, have a look at this toolbar here. When a zone is selected, it tells you the zone's key range and root key, the things we set in the file names of the samples, and had contact read for us as well as things like velocity range, volume, panning, and tune. We'll leave things as they are for now and come back to the mapping editor in its own chapter. Now that we've got this done, let's modify the sound of our piano to make the best of the samples we're using. I'll hide the wave and mapping editors for now and scroll down to the insert effects panel. I'll add in a two band EQ into the verse slot and then choose the mid power preset. Sure, that sounds a bit better. On second thought, let's convert this to a three band equalizer and use the third band to reduce some of that high end hiss. Choose a thick bandwidth, go up to a high frequency, and reduce the gain in that region. I like this piano. It sounds kind of nice and lo-fi. Let's close the instrument insert effects panel and add in a reverb into the send effects. For an instantly good sound, I'll pick the Piano Verb preset from the Reverb preset list. I think I like the modulation settings where they are, but note the effect of the attack dial when I slide it around for example. I can do really anything I want to this instrument. I can add in more zones to kick in only at certain velocities, layer on effects, or even reverse the playback of the samples. I hope you've enjoyed this chapter and got a feel for how much you can do given a set of decently recorded samples. Try recording an instrument of your own, label the samples appropriately, edit them with the wave editor, and then bring them into contact and make them sound even better. Before we exit instrument edit mode, let's hit either the quick save button here or the save edited instrument as button from the files menu here. Give the instrument a file name or keep the one you typed into the rack earlier. Next, you can choose the save mode with which contact will store your instrument. We already saw these save options in the main control panel chapter. So head back to that chapter to review them. Now, whenever you load contact, you can choose to load your instrument from the files menu by choosing load, or if you used it recently as we did, you can find it within the load recent menu. And you're ready to play.